Hey guys, Dr. Dublin, a board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about sunscreens, in particular one brand from La Roche-Posay. So first of all, I've got no conflict of interest. This is not a paid uh, video and by all means, I do not work for the company. I think that it's an excellent choice because um, La Roche actually makes really good products but their range of anthelios, which encompasses realistically probably a dozen types of sunscreens, will vary both in the labeling and also the consistency. So remember, sunscreens only measure uh, UVB. UVB is burn time. So for example, what does an SPF mean? An SPF of two means you can hang out in the sun for double the time without getting burnt, yeah? And SPF of four means you can be in the sun for four minutes compared to one minute, if that's your burn time, and so on and so on. Now, where it gets really tricky is, well, I guess what companies don't tell you is that an SPF of 30 compared to an SPF of 50 only gives you 1% extra coverage. But remember, the SPF is only a factor which measures your burn time. It doesn't measure UVA, but UVB only. So as I mentioned, with a UV rating of something like 30, 96% of UVB rays are actually attenuated, while an SPF of 50 gives you 97% attenuation. So we're only looking at 1% difference, but we're almost doubling the SPF uh, factor. So what I say to all patients is this, realistically an SPF of 30 um, will be enough, right? So unless you have, uh, I guess, a photodermatosis, or sun allergies, or basically um, medical conditions, you don't need to actually spend that extra to get uh, SPF 50. What sunscreens don't label is actually the UVA, and the UVA, as you guys know, penetrates deeper compared to UVB. So UVA causes uh, photoaging. It's the one that actually uh, breaks down your collagen and elastin in the dermal layer. So UVB, you can think of it's more superficial and that's burn time. UVA goes deep into your skin and UVA is the harmful one uh, when it comes to cosmetics as well. So UVA breaks down your collagen, your elastin, your hyaluronic acid, and it accounts for the majority of photoaging. So when you're looking for a sunscreen, make sure it's broad spectrum, acknowledging the fact that even the best sunscreens won't protect you from long wave UVA, and hence why dermatologists would recommend um, hats, umbrellas, and shade. Yeah, and sunscreen is just an adjunctive treatment. The other thing with sunscreens as well is that um, the majority of patients don't really uh, know how much to apply. And the guideline is this, most dermatologists agree, it's basically five grams for your face and neck. Yeah? So five grams is basically a teaspoon and it should be applied twice a day. I know some dermatologists say uh, every two to four hours. To me, that's, uh, that's maybe a bit of an overkill uh, because from a practicality point of view, a uh, patient's not gonna apply their sunscreen six to eight times a day. So I think twice a day is enough, yeah? Um, in the morning and um, about midday. So guys, let's talk about um, La Roche-Posay and why I think this is a good sunscreen. So in different countries, um, um, LRP is marketed uh, differently. It's both due to FDA, TGA regulations, CE regulations in Europe. Um, so the brand name itself encompasses, like I said, a variety of sunscreens, yeah? So one of the chemicals they use is called methoxy dibenzyl methane, yeah? Um, and that is what the, is the active ingredient. So it's not a, um, it's not a physical blocker, but it's actually a chemical blocker. And um, that is the one that's most widely used in Australia. In the US, however, uh, you do have uh, anthelios that's marketed slightly differently because the majority of anthelios contains both, um, I guess, physical sunscreens like titanium dioxide, 11%, um, and some other brands of anthelios with sensitive skin contain uh, the more traditional um, chemical blockers, including cinemates, salicylates, and avobenzone. So once again, it's not really a, um, a review on the individual products. It's just a review on the brand name itself. So I wouldn't get too carried away with, um, I guess, selecting what is the best sunscreen. What you have to do is actually select which is the one that you like to use, because I think the, it's really academic when you're using uh, physical blockers or chemical blockers. Sure, if you have a chemical sensitivity, that's super rare, yeah? but um, by all means, a chemical blocker is not, um, I guess, does not adversely affect most people. So I wouldn't be too hung up about that. Certainly if you want to read the products and read the ingredients in the country you're at, that's okay. Um, so just remember, physical sunscreens are the ones that contain uh, dioxide of metal, um, which is basically zinc oxide, titanium dioxide in small particles, nanoparticles. While the chemical sunscreens are 
do take longer to work here yeah? um, because the chemical sunscreens need to be absorbed into your epidermis. So most dermatologists say, look, you know, apply the sunscreen at least 10 to 20 minutes prior to sun exposure. Well, a physical sunscreen, because it lays a barrier on the top part of your skin and reflects light, works almost immediately. Okay. Now, I hope that gives you a great idea or some understanding on sunscreens. And like I said, don't be too hard on the SPF factor and also with the, whether it be physical or chemical blockers, just get the sunscreen on. That's the most important thing. So now to give this brand, I guess, Anthelios, a um, DAV score. So first of all, the skin science. Uh, you can't argue the fact that uh, sunscreens actually protect you from harmful rays. So that's a five out of five, yeah, based upon the pure science of the uh, product and the, I guess, ingredients they use in the sunscreen. So it's a solid five out of five. Number two, ease of use. <laughs> Sunscreens are super easy to use. Um, no matter what brand, yes, you actually just squirt it on. Remember, like I said, chemical sunscreens, what you wanna do is uh, apply that on 15, 20 minutes before physical sunscreens, just before going out. So the ease of use is there. Um, so it's a five out of five, yeah? So remember, sunscreen should be the actual foundation of all treatments, yeah? So anything about skincare, first thing most dermatologists actually will go on about is the use of sunscreen, both adequately and in the right manner. Let's talk about compatibility with other products. Um, and for sunscreens, they're super compatible with other products, yeah? So I'd give it a five out of five. Now, where some patients actually say, look, I've got sensitive skin. Sure, if you have things like uh, rosacea or dermatitis, or if you use your products incorrectly, for example, um, high strength vitamin A combined with things like glycolic acid, you may find um, a sunscreen is more sensitive to your skin. Um, what we do then is basically to say, look, why don't you prioritize sunscreen first and all the active cosmeceuticals later, yeah? So it is, sunscreens is basically compatible with any skin product, yeah? So remember, if you have skin sensitivities, you can buy um, La roche posay even in Australia, that's for sensitive skin. Uh, so remember, if you have sensitive skin, just use physical rather than chemical blockers. Okay. okay, so number four is the subjective feel of how the sunscreen is. Um, with that, I'll give it a five out of five. The reason being is that uh, this is personally, like once again, there's no, there's no conflict of interest, but this is my sunscreen of choice. This is the sunscreen of choice which my family uses. The reason being is because it's very cosmetically elegant. Um, it feels very light. Um, the other thing as well, it comes as a um, matte color as well. So um, it actually works well uh, for good coverage without that sheen. Um, and in fact, they even make a particular sunscreen for not only sensitive skin, but for oily skin as well to give you more of a matte finish. So it's really easy to use and it's, um, it's good. Okay, the next thing we talk about is packaging. Um, yes, some people get hung up about packaging. I think packaging is just fine, yeah? I'll give it a five out of five and I'll tell you why. Number one, it's clearly labeled. The only thing I would go on about is, yeah, at my age, I need glasses to read the, um, the products. But uh, look, at the end of the day, the packaging is fine. The other thing as well, which I like with this compared to, let's say, a pump pack is that uh, you can squeeze this, basically a tube um, or, or even the pump pack, almost all the way out yeah so for sunscreens which are big with big pump packs you're probably wasting about um yeah about five to seven percent of the product so packaging for me no problem five out of five now at the end of the day the sixth one is actually the price yes yeah? so, so far i've given this particular sunscreen top marks for everything but where i think it's going to fall down is actually the price um in the us a 50 mil um uh, pack is going to cost you 33, so RIP recommend retail price is 33 US dollars for 50 mils. In Australia, it's slightly cheaper. It's actually, in fact, it's a lot cheaper. In Australia, it's only $20 US dollars. Yeah, so it's about $30 Australian dollars. So still, if you talk about pricing and how much product they give you, uh, let's say if we work in US dollars for $33 uh, per um, 50 mils, Remember you're applying five mil application, yeah? So five mils uh, twice a day. So in reality, that's 10 mils you should be applying, right? So if you divide that into the package price, uh, one bottle, yeah, should only last you five days. So that's a hell of a lot to pay for the sunscreen. But at the end of the day, if you're gonna be spending money, buy a good sunscreen, okay? So most people don't use five mils, that's a caveat. But surely, um, if you do, Remember, it'll only last you five days. Guys, I hope that summarizes sunscreens, uh, especially with this um, Enthelios range from La Roche-Posay. Um, 
as always, you know, if I can go on and on about uh, how to actually look after your skin, dermatologists always say, you know, sunscreens first and then everything else last. So if you're gonna buy anything, this one really is a no-brainer, yeah? So it receives a uh, 27 out of 30 with a DAV score, with the only exception with the actual full score is the price of the product. Guys, I hope you liked that video. Please comment, share, like, subscribe, and do all the good things that make this channel grow. I'll see you same, same time, same place next week. Bye for now.